All right, there we go. Again, so welcome everyone. Um, this is our Science of Summer series. This is our first episode today. Um, my name is Monica McCubrey. I am the Wildlife Education Specialist with the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. I am out of Lincoln. And like I mentioned, um, we have been doing this since about 2020 or so, and we have never covered the same topic. So um, at the very end of the uh, episode today, I will be talking to you all about an evaluation that you can fill out. And I will also send everyone that was registered um, an email with some cool resources about some things we've talked about today and then also the link to view this on our education YouTube channel and the registration link for our next one next week. So We'll go ahead and get started. Like I mentioned, prehistoric creatures today. Um, there's a lot of prehistoric creatures out there and we only usually have, I usually do about 45 minutes or so or a little under an hour um, just in time for questions and stuff. So I could only fit so much in. So if I don't get to your absolute favorite prehistoric creature, I'm sorry. Um, I will do my best. I tried to cover a lot of like early Nebraska, before Nebraska was even Nebraska, um, all the way to about Ash Falls. Um, if you know what that is, cool. If you don't, you're going to learn about it today. So I will go ahead and share my screen for all of you. We'll get the PowerPoint up here. Maybe. There we go. All right. So we're going to talk about prehistoric creatures today. So this could be everything from a coral, a shark, a camel. All the things are going to be specifically about Nebraska. So if you have joined us before on a science of, you know that we cover about 99% of our topics relate to things in Nebraska. Um, but then also sometimes I do mention some things that are not in Nebraska, just because I think it's cool. Um, and it's in Nebraska, the Nebraska is where we're at, but I also understand that a lot of people aren't in Nebraska as well. So we cover lots of different topics. Uh, we will do a question answer series here at the end. So if you have questions, either keep them in your head or you're welcome to put them in the chat and then I will get to them as soon as I can. All right. Um, just so that everyone knows when you're typing stuff in the chat, just make sure that you are being on topic and that you're being kind to everyone. Otherwise, we do have the right to remove you. I don't think we'll have a problem today, but just wanted to let everybody know. And then I also want to let people know that I am by no means um, an expert in any of the subjects that I talk about today. I do a ton of research on this. I really love science. And so I understand there's people out there that know more than me. So if you know something, please put it in the chat. Um, I always like to learn just as much as all of you. So um, I am not an expert in the subject matter, but I am an expert in science communication. And so I'm trying to meet people where they are. Um, that is something that I'm good at. And so we're going to, we're going to balance it out here with the content. So, all right. So when I talk about prehistoric times, what does that actually mean? So are we talking about 50 million years ago? Are we talking about when Nebraska was just becoming a state in the eight, in 1867? Like, what does that look like? So we're going to go off of something called the geologic time scale. So when we talk about this, we're going to be talking about eons, we're going to be talking about eras. And so there's four different topics and time frames that we're going to kind of cover today. So the longest time ago, it was called the Proterozoic Eon. So eons are very, long periods of time. So if you think about where we are now, all the way back to about 2,500 million years ago, that's a very long time, um, up until the time about 542 million years ago. So that covers that era, or sorry, that eon. And then within an eon, there are different other parts or segments. So the Paleozoic era, some of you may have heard about that one before, that covers about 250 to 542 million years ago. In some of my slides, you might see MYA. That's just my abbreviation for a million years ago because it's a lot to type out. Um, but then also the Mesozoic area, or sometimes people call it the Cretaceous period. It's a little bit more common to call it the Cretaceous period. Um, if you've heard about that, we're going to be talking about some of those animals today as well. And then also a little bit more closer, I guess, to when we're alive here, zero to 65 million years ago is called the Cenozoic era. So what does it mean when I say eon? era period like where do those fall under so um this is the easy way for me to kind of show you this um but when we talk about an eon if someone says that was eons ago that was a very long time ago so it's a largest division of geologic time 
So when we talk about what eon are we in right now, we are in the Phanerozoic eon, which goes to about 540 million years ago to the present. So we're going to be in this eon for a while. Um, so two or more eras form an eon. And then an era is a little bit shorter of a geologic time frame. We are currently in the Cenozoic era. So if you want to be um, a smart aleck to somebody, you could say we're in the Cenozoic era, just letting them know. And they're like, no, that was the dinosaur time. Nope, it's actually right now. It goes all the way from 66 million years ago to the present. Um, and then a little bit longer uh, than a period is what we're talking about. Um, but two or more periods form an era. And then if you break it down a little bit farther, um, a period is just a basic unit of geologic time where a single type of rock is formed. So this could be a very long time. It could be a short time. It's usually pretty long. Um, we're currently in the quaternary period. Um, it began about 1.8 million years ago, and it's still going on today. Um, within this period, we saw lots of different things happen to the earth. Um, the first humans, the first mammoths, the first saber-toothed cats were here. This is when everything kind of boomed. Um, and then epochs. There's just a subdivision of a period. You could have many epochs in a single period. So if you look at the photo that I have here, it kind of breaks it down um, a little bit easier for you to understand. But I just wanted everyone to understand that when I say this is the era, this is the period, you kind of understand what that looks like. All right, so let's go ahead and go way back to the Paleozoic era. So this is what we're going to kind of focus on animals or prehistoric creatures during specific time periods in Nebraska. All right, so what does this look like? What does the earth look like when the Paleozoic era was happening? What did Nebraska look like? How did the seas happen? Like, what does the earth look like? So when we talk about 500 million years ago, Nebraska was under a shallow sea. It really wasn't Nebraska, but it was where Nebraska would eventually be. Um, so it was doing this until the late Cambrian, but um, I'm sure all of us know this, that Nebraska was under the sea long time ago. So we see a lot of beach sand deposits even now. Um, I'm not going to go through all of these, but I just kind of want you to see what was happening. So there was a bunch of erosional gaps from about 430 to 385 million years ago. The sea would rise, the sea would lift, there'd be some erosion. There was a lot of carbonate rock deposits. Um, also the major tectonic plates, they were colliding and that caused major stresses um, in the continent. And that would eventually form things like the Rocky Mountains that we see today. So there's a lot of things happening long time ago. Um, what did Nebraska specifically look like? So in the Paleozoic era, which was about 251 to 542 million years ago, this Paleozoic means ancient life. This was when things started coming about that we can actually see today. Um, it's divided into six different periods. Um, and we talk about this, um, the earth was the oldest rocks that Nebraska sees were these things called Pennsylvanian rocks. And we can actually still see signs of that today. So that is how far um, we know that Nebraska was around or that things are kind of showing up. But who knows, in 100 years, we may see older rocks. It just kind of depends on what's coming up. And um, I'm sure a lot of us have been hearing, especially last year when there was a bunch of droughts, um, things were popping up that we had no idea. There was huge droughts in Germany. There was a bunch of droughts in Texas. Nebraska was under a drought. Um, the water levels were going down, and it was exposing a lot of things that we don't normally see. So um, who knows what's going to happen with our climate? Um, but it's showing things that when we're learning new things all the time. Um, so closer to our time frame, not really, but long, longer ago, I guess, um, 260 to 275 million years ago, the sea was really low, there was coal being deposited, and then these terrestrial conditions started coming about um, about 275 million years ago. 
So what would we have seen? Um, these are not going to be camels or big, large mammals or anything. They were very tiny, like single celled organisms. So one of the first ones that you would see are these things called fusilinids. Um, they look like a grain of rice. If you look at them, uh, this is a lot of them in a single picture, but they were about the size of a grain of rice, so very tiny. Um, they're ben they were benthic creatures, which means they lived at the bottom of the ocean or the bottom of the sea, and they ate other tiny um, aquatic organisms, so even smaller than a grain of rice. They were super abundant in the late Paleozoic. Uh, we know this because of the rock records. Um, the flora and the fauna that were in this um, time frame, though, however, a lot of them, this Pennsylvanian rock time that I mentioned earlier, the Permian rocks basically um, they crop out the surface in the southeastern corner of Nebraska. So we found a lot of these um, fusilinids um, all the way down in like southeast Nebraska. That's where a lot of our limestone are, and that's where a lot of like the um, uh, Missouri River, um, the tributaries are, we see a lot of these exposed um, fossils. So we know that these were at least in Nebraska. And then um, when we talk about these, the following creatures, they were found in limestone rocks. So we've seen a lot of fossils within limestone. Um, but this creature became extinct at the end of the Permian. There was this huge kind of mass extinction, which gave way to a lot of things like that we kind of have ancient ancestors today, like mammals and some of our amphibians and our reptiles. So we'll talk about that later. Um, but this creature would create new uh, chambers and it grew in kind of this coiled pattern. All right, we also have a lot of corals at this time too. Um, in Nebraska, we found two major groups of corals. Both of them, however, are now extinct. They again went extinct at the end of that Permian mass extinction, but there are rugose corals, which are colonial, but they also could be solitary. So they could be in a big hunk or they could be individual. So I showed both pictures here. Um, it was really hard to find pictures of artist renditions of what they think they look like. So you're just, sorry, getting fossil pictures, but um, this also could help you might find these sometime and then you know what they are. So these rugose corals, um, they were solitary and sometimes, and they were known as horn corals. Um, so these polyps basically created a skeleton of calcite. Um, they sat on the ocean floor and they're very well preserved. So when we find them, they look like this. They're very well preserved and we can absolutely see what they looked like. Um, for those of you that are from Nebraska, you do know uh, we have state fossils. The, this is our state invertebrate fossil. So um, kind of interesting, the rugose coral is our state invertebrate fossil. There was also something called a tabulate coral, and these only formed in colonies. So you won't find them individually, but they have these skeletons that are twisted and they make these like larger um, structures afterwards. Um, so two very different types, um, but they were both found in Nebraska. All right, so these weird things, bryozones, um, they kind of look like today's corals. Like if you would go to the ocean and you go snorkeling, that kind of looks like what you would see. Well, that's because they're pretty much related to the reef building corals that we see now. A little bit different, but they're distantly related. So these are aquatic invertebrates. Um, they all lived in these sedentary colonies. So they didn't move, they sit at the bottom and basically they filter feed. So they had the super cool structure known as a lophophore, which was a crown of these tentacles and they would reach out and they would filter feed through the water and grab the things that they need and then leave the things that they don't, which was the water. Um, but these colonies, they get rather large and they could be in a fan shaped, they could be in a bush shaped, um, or they also could be a sheet. So very similar to the coral shapes that you might see when you're snorkeling. Um, many of these went extinct, but there are some that are still living today. So very ancient ancestors of what we saw during this time. Um, if you ever did find an individual one of these, they were called a zooid, um, but these were actually very important to the ecosystem because they gave shelter for a lot of different other smaller animals. They would always be found in here. And scientists now, they also find little tiny skeleton structures of other animals in those holes um, because they were a shelter for a lot of different other animals. 
All right, so what else would you find during this time? Again, there's not going to be things like saber-toothed cats or camels, but you might find a brachiopod. Um, the photo that I have here is a brachiopod. It looks like a clam. Um, it's a little bit different. Um, clams are symmetrical. These were not, um, but they are marine shelled creatures. Um, there were two groups found in Nebraska, the sparophids and the proctids, um, very different from each other. And then there's also something called a crinoid. These are very common fossils that you can find. Um, they kind of look like small little discs um, and they stacked on top of each other. Sometimes they were known as sea lilies, um, but they have these really cool feathery arms that would attach and grab food and they were attached to the bottom of the ocean. If you are lucky, you also might find some shark teeth in Nebraska. Um, we were under the sea at one time, so sharks were very common during this time, and we'll talk about one that was here in a little bit. Um, but sometimes they're found in limestone rocks or also shale rocks. Uh, fish, you might also find one. There's a very cool fish fossil. Um, if you ever go to Ponca State Park, uh, kind of down by the boat ramp, if you kind of look to your right and go up a little bit on a hill, there's a very big rock with a fish fossil, like a perfectly complete fish fossil. So if you ever find yourself up there, um, Nebraska did have fish. We were under the ocean. We know we did. Um, and then also a lot of fossil plants. So giant horsetails, ferns, tree ferns, lots of different things. And again, a lot of these things went extinct at the end of the Permian. There are some that still we see today, distant relatives, but otherwise they had their chance and I guess they didn't, they didn't do well. All right. So that was what you would have seen a long time ago. We're moving a little closer to where we are today. Um, so in Nebraska's geological history, we're in that Cretaceous period. Sometimes you might hear it called the Mesozoic era. Um, the animals start to change. Um, again, uh, the well, we'll talk about it. The Rocky Mountains are being formed to what we see today. Um, there's a lot of different things happening. Um, when these mountain ranges lifted up, they basically flooded the continent, including Nebraska. And then this helped kind of shape the Rocky Mountains. Um, the temperatures were different. The global circulation in the ocean started to slow and it became very stagnant and anoxic, so not a lot of oxygen within the water, which led to a massive amount of organic matter that is at the bottom of the ocean, which you can thank today because that's our petroleum that we use today. Um, you can really see this even on the Kansas-Nebraska border. It's the stuff called greenhorn limestone. Um, we also had this huge asteroid impact um, in 75, uh, sorry, about 74 million years ago, which is what is now Iowa. It was one mile wide and it caused this huge tsunami. All right, so the climate of Nebraska changed a ton. Um, it was what's called the Western Interior Seaway. This was a very important route for a lot of different animals that we're gonna talk about here. Um, we have this Pierre Shale, we had occasional ash layers, we have a shallow marine area. We also had something called the Dakota Formation. It's mostly sandstone with a bunch of red and white mudstone that you might see every once in a while, um, but it was very thick. Um, so you're going to kind of see what happens here in a little bit with all the animals, but they get a little bit bigger. Uh, this one, some of you might have heard before, an ammonite. If you look, I will show you really quick. The, oh gosh, <laughs> the photo that I have at this very beginning, that's an ammonite. So they kind of look like a um, coiled up snail shell, um, but that was an ammonite. So we saw them quite frequently in Nebraska. Um, however, it just depends on where you were, depends on the size of them. Some of them were ginormous, some of them were tiny. The ones that we had in Nebraska, the, at least the fossils that we found, they're pretty tiny. So they weren't huge, but the kind of reminded people a little bit of today's Nautilus, if you know what that is. Um, but they had these, they were jet propelled, they had these very large eyes. They kind of look like a squid or a cuttlefish, if you're familiar with them. Um, and then depending on the size, depends on what they would eat. So some of them would have eaten things like in Nebraska, they were small. So they would have eaten things like plankton or zooplankton. But then the larger ones, they could eat fish, they could eat bivalves, they could eat crustaceans. So it kind of just depends on where they were and the size of them. Um, but scientists originally, when they first found these shells of these animals, 
they thought that they were snakes that had turned to stone. They had coiled up and then just turned to stone. Well, we know that doesn't happen. Um, so the more that people researched them, they figured out that they were true other animals. They weren't snakes that had turned to stone, um, but they were ammonites. Um, so their nickname actually is snake stones. So if you ever hear someone call it that, it's actually an ammonite. Um, but they were actually very important animals too. They were food for a lot of different types of animals. Um, but they were in the family of mollusks, specifically the cephalopods. So things like uh, squid and cuttlefish. All right, these were cool, plesiosaurs. Um, there's a very awesome show on Apple TV Plus. I think that's the only place you can get it. It's called Prehistoric Planet. Um, if you ever want a good visualization of what these looked like, watch Prehistoric Planet. It is narrated by David Attenborough, so it's good. Um, but they have these animals on there and you can see how they move and it's all the information, but it's like a cinemat cinematic um someone has created them, they've made them 3D, and they're very lifelike. So you, it's a cool show to see some of these animals in person, in person when you watch the show. Um, but plesiosaurs were found in Nebraska. They kind of look like dinosaurs, but they actually were not. So this is a marine reptile. A lot of people kind of group them in with dinosaurs. They were not. Um, dinosaurs actually walked on land. These guys were in the water. Um, they had these long, weird necks, very sharp teeth. Um, but then they had this weird kind of like belly with these short little fins. Um, they had the serpentine neck, like I mentioned. Uh, we believe that they moved kind of like sea lions do today. So it was a modified style of underwater flight. So when they move, it almost looked like they were a bird, um, but they did reproduce via live birth. They did not lay eggs. And we believe that they were anywhere from 11 to 15 feet long. That's quite big for an animal that we could see in Nebraska. Um, but these guys, their nostrils, weirdly enough, were located all the way back behind their eyes or by their eyes. Um, right here, you can kind of see a little picture of one, um, not in the front of their nose, but behind on their eyes. And we believe that when they ate, they would go through a school of fish and kind of just swing their neck and then grab food as it went by them. Um, so it doesn't really seem that efficient, but again, this was um, how many millions of years ago, and we believe that's the way that they ate based on the fossil record and based on the um, skeletons that we have found. Um, there's a lot of different renditions of this animal too. So just be careful if you Google search one. Um, a lot of people believe this is what the Loch Ness Monster is. There's still one of these plesiosaurs today in Scotland, um, but a lot of people kind of base that idea of a Loch Ness Monster off of this animal. All right, so dinosaurs. Everyone wants to know, does Nebraska have dinosaurs or did we have dinosaurs? Well, I'm sorry to say, and this really kind of breaks my heart too, is that not very many dinosaur bones have been found in Nebraska. Very, very few, if any true dinosaur um, fossils have been found. But again, there's a lot that we're still finding, so we don't know. But we have found footprints of these things called ornithopods, which were bird-hipped dinosaurs. A lot of them would have been herbivores. So sorry, no T-Rex or things like that. Um, but if you mentioned earlier, if you remember, I mentioned this thing called the Dakota Formation. Um, so we're finding these um, types of rocks where these dinosaurs have been moving around the sandstone. Um, so we did actually find dinosaur prints um, on the coastal plains of Nebraska. So we know that dinosaurs were at least walking through the area um, of Nebraska when there was no seas. It was just that sandstone or that Dakota Formation. Um, so it's kind of interesting. Um, a lot of these dinosaur footprints have been found kind of in the southeastern part of Nebraska. Here's a photo. It was the best one I could find, but you can see the tracks and the footprints on those. So we did have dinosaurs, but we're just not finding any um, remains of them or anything like that. But who knows? We still might find some. All right. Um, any of you Jurassic World fans out there, um, you've probably have heard Mosasaurus uh, or a Mosasaur be mentioned in those movies. Um, we did actually have them. They were a real creature. They look nothing like what was actually in Jurassic World. Kind of 
but they weren't. Um, but they were apex predators of what was called that Western Interior Seaway. Um, so this is an artist rendition of what we believe they look like. But again, this was a marine lizard. Um, it was not a dinosaur. And in, I think in Jurassic Park and Jurassic World, they label it as a dinosaur. It's not, it's a lizard, it's a marine lizard. It had nostrils, it had lungs, it would come up and breathe air. Um, so it did not just live in the water all the time, but they were huge. They believe up to 50 feet long. Um, they ate pretty much anything they could catch. I mean, look at those teeth. They would even eat other mosasaurs um, and smaller mosasaurs. Um, there's a lot of different um, skeletons and remains that have been found in Nebraska. And uh, they believe in 1987, there was two horticulturists. Um, they were digging up some landscaping areas um, in NGPC um, at Niobrara State Park. And they noticed this really large fossil sticking up out of the ground. And they found a lower jaw. So they brought it to university and they said, oh my gosh, this is a mosasaur. And they're like, what? What's that? Um, so they went and they unearthed some more and they found a complete skull, jaw, and a partial skeleton with one of the paddles. Um, so it's pretty cool to be found in Nebraska um, in Niobrara State Park. Um, but it they labeled it as a skull and, and fossils that had an amazing state of preservation. So they learned a lot from mosasaurs just looking at what's been found in Nebraska. Um, the eye rings, so right where the eye was, um, were still intact, which is incredibly rare. Um, they found a row of puncture wounds on the jaw, and they believe what happened is that another mosasaur injured this mosasaur and it died in a fight. So kind of cool um, that one of these was found in Nebraska, but they preferred shallow waters. They had these very long muscular tails, um, but they did give birth to live young, very similar to like that plesiosaur that we talked about earlier. And again, if you watch that prehistoric planet, there's a very cool couple of scenes where they show what a mosasaur looked like and they showed smaller mosasaurs fighting for different territorial areas. Um, so you get a really good idea of what these animals looked like, how they swam, and then also um, kind of their behavior. So I would really suggest checking out that prehistoric planet. It's also a podcast if you want to listen to that as well. All right. So Nebraska had sharks. Um, one of them that we had, um, that's kind of the most famous one, I guess, that we talk about is a Tychodus. Um, that's that P1. It's the one species that was in Nebraska, very common. It was huge, about 33 feet long, and they believe that they kind of patrolled this inland sea about 90 to 70 million years ago. If you visit Morrill Hall, you can see one of these or a replica of one of these. Um, but instead of having these huge, sharp cutting teeth, like a normal shark that you would imagine, like a great white, they kind of had these like lumpy plates of teeth that they used to eat things like bivalves and crustaceans. Um, ammonites would have been one of the things that this animal ate. Um, so it's kind of neat to see that. And uh, one of the things that I'm gonna do for you here is I have just kind of a um, stock image and then I want you to kind of get an idea of this animal in your head. And then I will actually show you a picture of it. So here's what this shark, we believe, looked like. Um, you can see a, a normal sized human there for scale, um, but it looks like a normal shark that you see today, which is not rare and not uncommon. Um, a lot of our sharks are basically living ancestors anyway and living fossils. Um, the teeth would have been a lot different though. All right. So that was mostly the animals that you're going to see in that Cretaceous period. Um, the Cenozoic era, era, we're going to spend a little bit more time on just because there was a lot of things that happened during this time. All right. So what does the world look like? The climate was warming. Nebraska is kind of what it is now. It was warm and humid. Um, the climate kind of began to cool after that. So it got warm, it got cold. Um, Nebraska became this like savanna-like area. It was cooler and drier. And then all of a sudden there's rivers from the Rockies. And then the global sea dropped about 50 meters. Um, glaciers were covering parts of Nebraska. Um, and then we believe that those glaciers, the ice age kind of time that we hear about, it created the Great Lakes. So this is about the time that the Great Lakes were coming. So this was a long time ago. But this was known as the age of mammals. So what happened, there was this huge mass extinction. Um, it's called after the end of the Cretaceous. Uh, the mass extinction, basically the numbers in the mammals just popped um, during this time. Um, so a lot of those things, um, 
the asteroid impact kind of led to a lot of the demise of a lot of these animals. So things like the dinosaurs and those ammonites and um, a lot of the marine reptiles that we heard about, like the plesiosaurs and the mosasaurs, they were gone. And some of them still survived because obviously we have sharks, um, but they were replaced by a lot more sharks as well as things like whales or close things to modern whales today. Those were kind of the top carnivores at the time in the sea. So it it killed off a lot of other animals at extinction, at mass extinction, but it gave way to the age of mammals, which is, thank goodness, because here we are today. All right, so I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you about these animals, and I just have this kind of stock image here. So I want you to kind of think about what does the animal look like by the description that I give you, and then I will show you a photo, an artist rendition of what we believe this animal looked like, and I want you to think, wow, that's not what I pictured, or that's exactly what I kind of had in mind. So um, this thing is called the Merytherium. It is related to an elephant. It was kind of this also pig-like animal, lived about 37, 35 million years ago. We believe that it kind of took the place um, where the niche of a hippo is today. Um, it's kind of like the hippo of the time. It wallowed in swamps and rivers. The teeth, just by looking at them, scientists kind of estimate that they ate really soft water vegetation. The second incisor on their tooth kind of formed a tusk, so very similar to a hippo today, um, or kind of like a modern elephant, um, but they're really more distantly related to a manatee or a sea cow. Um, they were smaller than modern day elephants. We believe that about 70 centimeters high, so that's not very big, but three feet long, so fairly long. Um, if anyone knows what a uh, tapir is or a pygmy hippo, that's kind of what it looks like. Just a little bit more prehistoric, I guess. So um, think about a hippo. That's kind of what we had in Nebraska. All right, so we're gonna move on to this flightless bird, which I will tell you the image that I had in my head after reading all this and then seeing an image, the image is terrifying. <laughs> I just, I don't know, these large birds are kind of interesting. So um, it was a flightless bird um, that was found in North America. It was also found in Europe. Um, it lived about 57 to 37 million years ago. They, if you know what a cassowary is or an emu or an ostrich, kind of think about that towards the bottom. They had these big kind of scaly feet, um, but they had massive legs. We believe it was a really fast runner. It had a huge head and a powerful beak. And we also believe that it ate other smaller mammals because that was what was around at the time. Um, we don't really know what the plumage was, was like. There's a lot of incomplete skeletons. So we science has to make a lot of guesses. This is what kind of people have found, but we believe that it was about seven feet tall. That's ginormous for a bird here, just saying. And it did have small wings, but we know that it did not fly because it doesn't have the right muscles to fly. And then also we believe that it's kind of related to our modern day fowls, like our water fowls and our chickens. So think of a seven foot chicken eating smaller mammals and that's what you got. So um, again, this thing is seven feet tall. I'm five eight, so I can't imagine like, this bird um, that ate small mammals. And when they say small mammals, this is not a small mammal. In my head, this is like the size of a deer. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see all these artist renditions. And granted, this might not be correct at all. There's a lot of guesses that go along with some of these just because of the incompleteness of the skeletons, and we don't have a lot of remains that have been shown. So there's a lot of guessing that goes along with prehistoric creatures. But this was kind of the average photo that I found of this animal. All right, so there's also something called a Paraceratherium. It's very hard to say, um, but this is an extinct genus of what was called a hornless rhino. So we know in Nebraska that we had rhinos. We had horses, we had camels. Um, if you've ever heard of the place of ash fall fossil beds, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, but that gave way to a lot of information about our prehistoric history. So these animals had a very long neck. They had long uh, tusk-like incisors. There was this weird incision that they found in every single one of their fossils. So they came, kind of came to the conclusion, the scientists came to the conclusion that they probably had uh, a prehensile upper lip or like that proboscis trunk where they could grab onto things. Um, they were a mammal, so they had a pretty long gestation period or time when they had um, when they were pregnant with animals. Um, they believed that they ate like leaves, soft plants and shrubs. It lived in this arid desert to kind of a subtropical
tropical forest. Remember, Nebraska was a savanna for a while, but then it was also a rainforest. It was hot and humid. It was cold. We've had everything. We've had a sea. Um, but the name of this animal, it actually translates to near the hornless beast. Um, so again, this is what I'm telling you, but then I'm going to show you a photo of it. Um, they do believe, scientists believe that it was one of the largest um, mammals that kind of existed during this uh, Oligocene epoch. So it's pretty big. Um, the legs were tall and pillar-like, and it was large, so it didn't have a lot of predators. So um, I'm going to show you a photo, and it's not what I thought it was going to be either. So this guy, it kind of looks like a camel and an elephant, a rhino, all kind of mixed together. Um, but you can kind of see the artist kind of um, show this like prehensile lip. So we believe that it grabbed bushes or trees or leaves and that's how it ate. All right. Um, this one is a extinct species. This is an Arctodus. Um, so a bear, this bear was about eight to 10 feet tall, weighed around 1600 pounds. They had very slender paws and they were elongated. Um, they were pretty widespread across North America. Um, however, scientists believe that they were gone or they left, they died off um, because the vegetation, not necessarily that they ate it or they depended on it, but the food that they ate depended on it. And when you don't have a lot of food, you don't tend to live very long. So um, this is distantly related to a species of bear in South America. Um, so this was just a, basically a ginormous bear with a short nose. Um, it was one of the largest mammalian carnivores to ever exist. Um, and it was here in Nebraska. They thought it was a carnivore for the longest time, like a true carnivore, but they found um, poop or coprolites um, from these animals, and they found traces of plant and berries in there. So they've kind of changed their mind, and they believe that it was an omnivore, which is very true to a lot of our other mammals and bears that we see today. So here's an artist's rendition of this animal, um, considering, like, if you think about a grizzly bear, this was like a grizzly bear on steroids, so eight to 10 feet tall. So if you think about a basketball hoop, that's 10 feet tall. So just kind of think about that. It was a huge animal. All right. Um, a deodon. Um, so this is an extinct mammal that lived in the late Oligocene, early Miocene area. It was about 5.8 feet tall at the shoulders, had a skull, um, and it was about three feet long. So pretty large animal. Um, the limbs were long and slender. Um, their diet kind of consisted of vine, roots, nuts, meats. Um, the name of this animal, that deodon, it's actually derived from the Greek word, and it means deos, or dreadful, or hostile, and odin, meaning teeth. So this was a carnivore or an omnivore, I guess is what they called it here, um, but it had large teeth. It was really adapted to grasslands, which is what Nebraska was at the time. They also lived in dense forests. So we see a lot of these um, around. They are one of the kind of the rarest mammals, um, skulls and uh, fossil remains that we found, but we know we've had them. So here's what they look like. I'm just really glad I didn't live during this time. These are crazy looking animals. Um, but again, their name means dreadful or hostile teeth. And you can see why. All right, Paleocaster. Some of you might've heard of this one. Um, if you go to the State Museum or Morrill Hall, you can see um, the burrows of these animals. So these guys, we did not discover them first. We discovered their burrows. So there was a guy named James Cook who had a ranch uh, along the Niobrara. And he kept finding these weird corkscrew things. He called them devil corkscrews. Um, and he was the first one that found them in Nebraska, and he had no idea what they were. Um, so he asked one of his friends, who was a geologist, he came out to his property, and he discovered that they were burrowing animals, some type of animal. They didn't know at the time what made them. So now we know they did some more digging, literally digging and researching and information. And when they got to the end of these spiral burrows, they found these prehistoric beavers. So basically very similar to the beavers that we have now, they were just a little bit larger. Um, so they lived in groups, we believe just like mo modern beavers. Um, but they 
again, they couldn't figure out what made these animals. So when they get down there to the very end, they found that they were um, giant rodent fossils and these were giant underground burrows. We're not really sure why they made the spirals. We believe it had something to do with if something flooded or there was a lot of rain, then the burrows wouldn't flood as bad. Um, so this is what they looked like. I couldn't really find a great picture of the animal itself, but um, you can see the spiral burrows. And if you go to Morro Hall, they have a plaster cast of one of these and it's cool. They're huge burrows too. I mean, normal beavers are not small, but these guys were ginormous. All right, bear dogs. Um, so these are cool animals. They were wolf and hyena-like bear dogs. They share, their name kind of is not true to what they were. They were not bears. They were not dogs, but they share features of both of them. They were the largest carnivores alive about 22 to 23 million years ago. They preyed on things like juvenile rhinos, camels, um, small sheep like oreodonts. Um, scientists have also found their underground dens, and they believe that they were the oldest known record of a um, large mammal or a large carnivore um, that burrowed. So it was kind of the first record of them um, actually burrowing. So um, these animals, like I mentioned, they're not bears, they're not dogs. They had heavy bodied, um, they had heavy bodies. They had feet flat on the ground. They were pretty long legged. They had long snouts. Um, and we also believe that they could have been um, omnivores as well. Again, there's been traces of berries and plants found in their poop. Um, so again, this is all kind of speculation. We're doing the best we can with the evidence that scientists have. Uh, so here's a photo of one of these guys. Um, they do look like a dog. In my opinion, they look like a dog or a hyena or something like that, um, but very interesting looking animals. All right, Nebraska had camels. We probably know that. Um, three species of camels have been found at ash Hall fossil beds. One of them was Titanolipus. Um, so this one, the name Titan means tall or big. Um, this is the closest living relative we can find to the Bactrian camel. So Bactrian, if you think about B, they have two humps. The dromedaries have one, like D. Um, but these were completely endemic to North America. And scientists believe that this is one of the last surviving species that called North America home. So camels actually were here in North America for a very long time. Um, they were native here a long time ago. Um, but then we see them now, we think of kind of them in Africa or Australia. Um, so very different species and different areas of the world than they used to be. Um, but uh, these guys um, were just interesting looking animals. They look kind of like a camel today. I'll show you a picture of them. A little different. Um, but this is kind of what they believe they looked like. They also had fat storage, just like the camels that we see today. Uh, again, this was just one species that we've had here in Nebraska. There were a total of three that were unearthed at Ash Falls. All right, we also had elephants. Nebraska is literally home to elephants. Um, if you ever go to Morrill Hall, there's literally a whole room devoted to them called Elephant Hall. Um, many different types. We had things called four tuskers, stegomastodons, mastodons, mammoths. We're kind of the most common ones that you see in Nebraska. Uh, four tuskers, they mig migrated from Asia in kind of the middle um, to late Miocene area or era. Um, these guys have been found quite frequently in Nebraska in what's called the Ogallala group of rock formations, uh, kind of near Valentine. Um, but some of the oldest known um, ant elephants to exist in Nebraska are these four tuskers. And then there's also something called the stegomastodon, um, existed during the Pliocene about 4 million years ago. So it's a lot closer to us than 260 million years ago. Um, but remains of the stegomastodon have been found kind of throughout Nebraska. If you go to the university website and go to Morrill Hall, you can actually see a map of Nebraska and every county um, where they found each of these different types of animals. And I could actually include that in the email that I send all of you as well. I want to say that it's been like 90 out of 93 counties or something like that where they found remnants of either an elephant or a stegomastodon or something like that. It's an insane amount of count counties. I know that. 
All right, and then mastodon. These are pretty common um, from about 2 million years ago to about 10,000 years ago. Um, the climate in Nebraska was cooler. It was a little drier. So they ate shrubs and pine trees. And they had this very interesting like grassland dominated ecosystem, which, which is very similar to what is in Western Nebraska now. And then um, we also have mammoths. So most common elephant fossil to be found in Nebraska. Um, it was present from about 2 million years ago to about 10,000 years ago. Um, we believe that a various species crossed the Bering Strait. It is the, um, in Nebraska, we also have the world's largest mammoth skeleton. It was found um, in Lincoln County, so kind of way out in western Nebraska. And if you've ever visited Morrill Hall, you notice this huge uh, statue that stands in front of it. His name is Archie. So Archie is the largest um, replication of that mammoth skeleton that's been unearthed in Nebraska. Um, and now you can visit him at the State Museum. So if you ever go visit, this was the size of Archie. He was ginormous. So these animals were huge, um, but you can, you can visit him, take your picture with him. He's very nice. And then if you want to go see some of these animals or obviously not in real life, but if you want to go see their skeletons or where they lived or the kind of, um, what did they look like? So Ashfall is the best place. Um, National Geographic has called this place the Pompeii of prehistoric animals. Um, so it's actually owned, the land is owned by Game and Parks, um, and we like manage it, but the university does a ton of research and we partnership that out with them. Um, so the excavation of this area was done between 1977 and 1979. Um, we believe that the site is dated about 10 million years ago. So when you go there, like you can kind of see here, you can go around this boardwalk and most of the time there's people doing some research in the center, but you can go see all these cool skeletons of things that have been found. So nearly a hundred complete rhinos were discovered. There's horses, there's camels, there's turtles. Nebraska had old a long time ago. We had turtles and tortoises. We had cranes. Lots of other animals have been found there, but nearly everything is in like like perfect condition, though they were preserved in 3D. So everything we learned from population dynamics, there's some that have um, some that when they died, they were, the females were pregnant. So we can see what the young would have looked like and how their reproduction would have gone. We, some of them had food in their belly still. So we could see their diet. We could assess their social behavior just because of what was found here. So this is just a huge amount of information. Um, but they're buried in um, volcanic ash. Um, so in a bed of pure volcanic ash, um, like I said, some of them contain stomach contents. Um, out of all the animals that were found there, there was 18 species of vertebrates. And then 12 of those are mammals. Um, there's barrel bodied rhinos were very common. And then five species of horses. Those are the most common ones that you're going to see at Ashfall. All right, so the skeletons, when you look at them, there's definitely a pattern and an arrangement to these animals. Um, when you looked at the layers, for some reason, always, 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 the rhinoceros were first, and then in a deeper layer um, were smaller hooved animals, so things like horses and camels, and then you see the birds and the turtles. So um, there's definitely a layer of how these animals were found or when they died. Um, also, not every animal died instantly. Over time, it was days, it could have been weeks, um, but what happened was there was a volcanic eruption, all this ash, basically every animal that was found there, it had um, very porous superficial bone, which translates into they smelled or they inhaled a lot of that volcanic ash and a lot of those chemicals. And so over time, they just died in days, weeks, whatever. Um, but there was also a lot of bite marks on these animals. So as they died, smaller scavengers would come and eat off of them. Um, so we could see those as well. That gives the scientists a lot of good information about what other animals were in the area too. So um, it's very cool. If you ever get a chance to go visit it, I would highly recommend it. It. It's kind of out in the middle of nowhere, but it's a good day trip for a lot of us. Um, also, there's agate fossil beds or Hudson Mang, which is way out in western Nebraska, and then also Toadstool. Toadstool is a great place. It's a federal, um, it's uh, run by the federal government, but it is a historic site. Um, you can go hike. There's a lot of cool animals out there. And then every once in a while, you can find fossils um, because of the rivers that run through there. Just be cautious. Um, it is... Um, 
illegal to pick up a permit uh, or sorry to pick up a fossil in a state park or a federal area. You do need to have permits to do that, but you are welcome to look at them and then put them back. All right, so that was a little longer than normal. That was about 50 minutes, but that was a ton of information. So like I mentioned, this is a six week science of summer series. Uh, next week, we're gonna be talking about pollinators because it is pollinator week. We're gonna talk about some aquatic plants. We're gonna talk about mountain lions, animal communication, and then we're gonna finish off our summer series with clouds. And then we will start again in, I think it is September or October. So um, we do usually three rounds every single year. Um, and this is our summer series round. All right, so like I mentioned, if you joined us late or if you would like to send this to somebody or watch it again, we have our education YouTube channel. We have everything on there. Um, like I mentioned, we've been doing Science of since 2020, so I have a ton of episodes. So if you're like, gosh, I really wish you would do one on birds, there's probably one on birds already, or I really wish you would do one on frogs. I've done frogs. So um, there's a ton of information on there. You can watch those. We also have a Facebook page. We have an Instagram page. Um, a lot of our events, and there's fun facts and resources that you can download and look at for free, and then also our education website. And I can put all this in the email that I send to everyone who read registered as well. So thanks everyone. Hopefully we see you next week for pollinators. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen because I think there were some question. Oh, maybe not. Always kind of worries me if there's no questions. It's like, did I not answer things correctly or did you just feel overwhelmed? So um, totally understandable. If you do have any other questions, I will email everyone that registered with the link to register for next week, the link for the YouTube channel, and then also some resources that we talked about today. So things like um, the information about those elephants and where you can find them. Um, also things about ash ball or toadstool, um, picking up fossils, that kind of stuff. So I'll include a lot of those links in my email. But again, if you have any questions, if I can't answer them, I will find someone that does. Um, Shane Tucker works at the university. He is the highway paleontologist. He is the most knowledgeable person about all of this stuff. Um, so if I can't answer your question, I I will probably refer to Shane because he's really good. So, um, but again, I hope everyone had a good time and thanks for joining us. I know three o'clock on a Thursday is kind of weird, but I appreciate it. Um, and hopefully we'll see you all next week for pollinator. So have a great day and uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks everyone.